discussion is of course about the clothes, but the context in which they're displayed is also key. And that's never been more true than now, with contemporary concerns about the environment and health often informing the backdrop to catwalks. Take Kenzo's 2020 winter collection. Guests had to enter an airtight space before finding themselves in vast plastic sanitation chambers. Kenzo Takada, the brand's founder, although no longer its owner, was happy with the result. It's great. It's great. I'm very happy. It's wonderful. The collection is elegant, relaxed, but structured at the same time. Since the year 2000, Kenzo's been led by no fewer than five designers, and soon the Portuguese Felipe Oliveira Baptista will become the sixth. I think Kenzo has always been about that allure, about cut, comfort, joy, and also about protection. Don't forget all those sleeping bag designs, those parachute dresses. And the clothes have always been very adaptable, and I love that. I think it's really modern. That idea that you can adapt an item of clothing according to your needs. Using zips to really change a silhouette. There are lots of elements that are reversible. Hoods that become jackets, which become skirts. All those elements are a deep dive into Kenzo's history, and also my own. It was a similarly medical backdrop for Japanese designer Mame Kuroguchi, who chose to present her collection at Paris's Faculty of Pharmacy. Guests wait patiently in a corridor as models make their entrance through hospital screens. The collection is called Embracing, like the French Embrassé. The clothes were conceived as a sort of protection, and it's because you get this feeling of protection that you can at least feel comfortable and feel happy. Brands are reflecting the current zeitgeists through their mise en scène. At Balenciaga, a chance to see some alarming predictions realized. Seizing on the theme of climate change, the brand's creative director, Demma Vassalia, has submerged her catwalk. Not even the front row was spared. The ceiling, a disconcerting series of projections. As for the clothes, think rubber boots, coats and hats, but also some more form-hugging pieces. The end of the world may be nigh, but that doesn't mean you can't still dress up. And then there are the rebels. At Saint Laurent, Anthony Vaccarello, as ever, rages against what he sees as a creeping puritanism. Looks straight out of an 80s bourgeois cocktail party are infused with subversive elements. Houndstooth, animal print and polka dot abound, as does one notoriously suggestive material, latex. As for the decor, it was all high contrast curves rendered in incongruous carpet. It was amazing. It was a beautiful, beautiful show. A uh, mix of 80s, 70s, maybe a little Berlin. I don't know. Strong, very strong. American designer Tom Brown is a different sort of rebel. Under the glass dome of Paris's School of Fine Arts, he's doing what he does best, giving the classic suit a very modern twist. Of course, it has to be optimistic. Yeah, no, it's really just taking both men and women and playing with the idea of how I approach them in the same way. And I wanted them to, you know, give the same sensibility and uh, positive sensibility and almost mixing and melding which, who was the man and who was the woman. And who is a couple. And who is a couple. Exactly. Man and man, woman and woman, or man and woman. And it's a fantasy universe with the uh, kind of musical comedy. Yeah, we're starting with the story of Noah's Ark, two by two, animals, two by two, and then playing with what happens after they go into the future. At a vast sports hall in the capital, meanwhile, Christelle Cochet is offering up a collection that's both sporty and inclusive. It's distinctly wearable and highlights the savoir-faire of the label's artisans. 
This time, I spent a lot of time thinking about how to work with denim, how to integrate it into my designs. It's a democratic fabric that is part of the global wardrobe. It has no gender. We used it for some very sophisticated cuts. Sleeves inspired by the 1930s, some pieces cut on the bias, embroidered with the help of the Le Marier workshop. We used little leather flowers and Swarovski crystals for embellishment, and there was some vegan leather too. And at the end, we layered these different elements on top of these really couture dresses. I was interested in this tension between something as everyday as denim and more couture pieces, that exceptional craftsmanship. To end, a note of optimism in these difficult times. With all these catastrophes around us, I just want to contribute something positive. And I think that seeing all these young people determined to find solutions is certainly a positive thing. Fashion is often escapism, but it can also be the very opposite, a way of channeling our fears and our hopes for the future. Always trust what the correspondent tells you. When Emmanuel Soji calls us on a Friday night to say that two Frenchmen have been kidnapped in northern Benin, even if authorities here in Paris aren't talking about it, I know it's true because I know how hard she's worked to verify that information. I, too, was once a West Africa correspondent. And uh, you wouldn't believe the amount of information, true or false, that people throw your way that you then have to check and double check. A more recent example, uh, there were the news agency wires talking about a massacre in Mali. Our correspondent, Christelle Pierre, calls up, says, wait before you give the toll. I'm still fact-checking it. We want to go fast, but you know what? We waited. Liberté, égalité, actualité.